Hi, hey there. How's it going? Good. How about you? Happy Thursday. I, think. I know. I always have to check when <laughs> I say the day. Yeah. Happy Thursday. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome. Um, I'm going to let people join a little bit. Um, so we'll get started in a few minutes here. But um, yeah, grab a warm beverage because it is fall outside. I don't know if you've been outside, Michelle, but it is crispy. <laughs> I walked my dog and he was very unhappy to be outside. So that's how you know it's fall. <laughs> really? Does he wear a little sweater vest? <laughs> no, he just shivers like oh. the whole time on the walk. <laughs> I love that. That's okay. All right. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, um, hi, everyone. Feel free to uh, say hi in the comments and let us know your name. We'll say hi. Um, but I think we'll probably get started. So, um, we can probably just start with introductions. Um, my name is Jamie Duong. I am the Senior Marketing Manager here at Slarity, and I'm joined by Michelle. Michelle, want to give an intro? Yeah, I'm Michelle May. I'm a marketing recruiter here at Slarity, and I've been here around three and a half years, so it's been a while. Nice. Thanks. And thanks for being here with me. Um, we are talking about bouncing back after a layoff. Uh, for those going through a layoff, or maybe you know somebody who is it's a scary time. Layoffs, they can be sudden or they can be unexpected, but they don't need to be debilitating. And there are lots of things that you can do to regroup and land your next great role. Um, you know, what would you say, Michelle, are some things that someone can do in those first few days or even few weeks following a layoff? Yeah, it's super topical because it is unfortunately happening a lot lately. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing is just, I mean, taking that kind of initial reset for yourself. It's easy to kind of go into panic mode whenever you get big news like that. Um, so whether it be grabbing coffee with a friend, just going for a walk, whatever it is, take a minute to reset so you're really ready to jump into your search. Mm -hmm. And after that, I mean, the biggest thing is just engaging with your network as soon as you can. I keep seeing this metaphor on LinkedIn lately that says like your network is like a spare tire. You know, if you're driving and break down on the side yeah. of the road and you don't have a spare tire, it's going to take like two hours for the tow truck to get there. But mm -hmm. if you have a spare, you can just jump right to the repair shop. And so I think your network is similar. If you've built up this network of people that you can really engage with right away, your job search is going to get to a much quicker and, and hopefully more productive start. Yeah, no, that's a great metaphor. I love that. Um, that can be kind of intimidating, though, for people. Are there any first steps that you'd recommend for getting the most out of your network? Gosh, I think there's a lot of ways to go about it. If you're bold, you can do posts on LinkedIn. Even as a mm -hmm. recruiter, I, I still find that kind of intimidating. So I tend to go for more kind of one on one conversations with people. Mm -hmm. So if you've been impacted by a layoff for or even if you haven't been, I think it's great to check in on people's anniversaries, have informational conversations with people, even if you aren't looking. So you really have a strong sense of like what it is that people want. And again, can reach out to those people when you need it and vice mm -hmm. versa when things like layoffs happen. Yeah. Um, is there things that people can do maybe optimizing their LinkedIn profile? So it's not always just them reaching out. It's finding them possibly. Yeah, hopefully people are finding you too. I feel like, I mean, there's of course the open to work function that I really mm -hmm. highly recommend. And there's a few different ways you can have like the green banner that shows that you're open to work. Um, or maybe if things just feel unstable, there's an option to have it be more like just cluing in recruiters or managers that you're looking. So definitely mm -hmm. turn that on because when I'm looking for people, that's, it's a holy entirely different tab that I'm looking into of people yeah. that are saying, I'm ready to move, reach out. Mm -hmm. So that's a great way to go about it. Um, even setting up like LinkedIn job alerts. So the system can kind of work for you and proactively send you jobs. is a great way to go about it. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd say a lot of people, I mean, if, if you haven't been actively looking and get laid off, just doing some basic kind of facelifts to your profile is big too, like adding keywords into your skills section, updating your about me section. Like I looked at mine recently and it said like, oh, I'm a new college graduate. And I was like, oh, I graduated three years ago. Um, so making some of those basic tweaks, I think can really just help people better find you without hopefully having you do as much of the lifting mm -hmm. on your end. Yeah. And that's probably one of those opportunities too, for even if you're not 
you know, in the midst of a, a layoff right now are, are things that you can be occasionally like auditing and updating your LinkedIn profile to make sure it's, you know, fresh. Yeah. Well, especially LinkedIn added a feature where you can add skills under like each of mm -hmm. your jobs that you've had. And yeah. that's super helpful for recruiters that are trying to find you because we're searching you by keywords. So if those aren't on your profile, we probably aren't even finding your profile to, to reach out. So yeah, yeah that, no, that makes sense. Um, because because I know you, I know career coaching is a passion of yours and you do it almost every day, but if someone doesn't have someone like you in their corner, how can they take a step back and get to the bottom of what they want to do next? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of what I recommend is is asking people, recruiters that they know or career coaches they know, because again, we're having those conversations daily. So a lot of times we can help you kind of sift through what you do or don't want to do next. But mm -hmm. past that, I think it's really just doing some soul searching, saying like, what was my favorite part of my job? What did I really hate in my job maybe? Yeah. And I don't want to do again. Um, and again, I think when people get laid off, you you haven't always thought about some of those things because you weren't really ready to make the move. Mm -hmm. So when you're kind of pushed into your search, I think it's really critical that you don't just go and like send out a hundred applications, really fine tuning. This is the type of company I want to be in. This is the salary range I need. You know, I want to work on site in a hybrid capacity, whatever those things you're looking for are, I always tell people like write them down. So as you're going through conversations or even informational interviews, you're really able to gauge like, is this the right fit? That way you're not making a knee jerk reaction and taking on a job that maybe isn't what you're looking for if you were in kind of an unfortunate situation with a layoff. Yeah, right. And honestly, sometimes looking for a job can be in a job in and of itself. And so taking that time, that that kind of pre-work and really um, figuring that stuff out actually alleviates a lot of work um, on the back end. Because if you're sending, you know, like you said, hundreds of applications, that's, you can burn out pretty easily and get pretty discouraged. So right. And a lot of people get to the end and they're like, I don't even want this job offer I mm -hmm. had. And so I think yeah. some of that clarity up front helps to hopefully avoid you know, the process of going through interviews to find out, like, I'm not even interested in joining this company because it doesn't stack up to what I want to do. Right. Right. Um, any, before we hop off, any last tips or thoughts for people facing a layoff or maybe if they have people in their, net, their network who are? I think just stay positive and start reaching out to your network. Again, I think it's really hard to take layoffs kind of personally. Um, yeah. Although at the end of the day, a lot of times they're not really a reflection of yourself so much as, you know, the company just had to do what it had to do. Mm -hmm. So stay positive and just start to reach out and think to what's next. I mean, I think there's there's honestly a lot of silver linings that come with layoffs sometimes because maybe mm -hmm. you were just comfortable in a job and this is the push you needed to find something that's better. Um, but regardless of the situation, I would say find a good recruiter, a friend, whatever it is, and mm -hmm. really just start having conversations. And of course, Slarity is, is here to help if you ever want to chat, um, whether it be an event about the bad news or, or kind of chat about the next job, we're always here to help. Yeah, yeah, no, that's spot on. And I'm going to throw some helpful um, resources in the comments of this LinkedIn Live. Um, so check those out after the live, just some helpful resources for those if they're in the midst of their job search. Um, or you know somebody who is. We also uh, have a lot of opportunities on our website, so I'd encourage folks to go check those out. Um, and then, like Michelle said, Michelle, myself, and the whole Celerity team are at your disposal if you have any questions. Um, and you know, we love to do this is what we do. So we love we love to create happy careers, and so we'd love to help you find yours. Um, so with that, I want to thank everyone for joining us. Uh, have a wonderful Thursday. Go out and enjoy that fall weather. Um, and thanks, Michelle. Yeah, good luck for everyone.